Brilliant Stars really kind of changed the landscape for the Pokemon trading card game. If you remember correctly, so this came out in February, like February 25th, somewhere around there of 2022. So it's about a year and four months away from its introduction. That's how long it's been in production, in print, whatever you want to call it. However, it kind of came at a time where there wasn't a whole, it was kind of declining popularity in Pokemon. If you remember, we came off the celebration set, the 25th anniversary set, uh, Pokemon craze was at an all time high during that set. People going out, buying products for double, triple MSRP, not too long before celebrations released because there was FOMO all over the place. People were worried about not getting the product. And then all of a sudden Pokemon was like, hold on a second, uh, hold the phone guys. Uh, we're going to print a lot of this. So you're going to have plenty of different chances, plenty of options, plenty of availability. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to reprint like every single Sword and Shield set. If you remember, we got a huge, massive wave of Chilling Rain, two massive waves of Evolving Skies, a first print run and a second print run of Fusion Strike, uh, Darkness Ablaze, Vivid Voltage Booster Boxes and ETBs that started popping up all over the place. It really kind of showed that Pokemon was like, we don't really care about resellers. We don't really care about the secondary market. Pokemon distribution is so different than a lot of other companies out there. Pokemon sells directly to distributors and then also directly to big box stores. Right now you see Target offering uh, under $100 for Paldea Evolve booster boxes that you can go online and buy. You can't buy them uh, in store, but you can buy them online on Target's website, which is absolutely crazy. crazy. So Pokemon sells to these different distribution companies and then some uh, big box retailers and then those distribution companies go around and turn them to right now mostly brick and mortar stores but also uh, in the past you've been able to uh, offer or they've been able to offer product to online LGSs and online brick and mortar stores things like that whereas a lot of other companies like Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh require a brick and mortar setup which is different than Pokemon but Pokemon has proven time and time again that they'll continue reprinting stuff long after it's been in existence. We've seen this with, uh, we saw this with Ancient Origins. We saw this with Primal Clash. We saw this with uh, Roaring Skies was a huge example where they just printed this massive, massive truckload of booster boxes in order to kind of fix the market. And Brilliant Stars came out at a time when we got immersed with all of these reprints and a lot of people were kind of leaving the hobby a little bit, not sure really what to think. They were kind of sick of things and then Brilliant Stars came out and Pokemon was like, Look at this. Look at this trainer gallery. We're introducing the trainer gallery. And that changed things for a lot of people. A lot of people got excited because we had this inclusion of trainer gallery cards, these story cards, which is something that we've never really experienced in a main series set before. We've had them in promo form, but never in a main series set. Also, Brilliant Stars featured an alternate art Charizard, which brought a lot of people who were kind of tinkering on the edge back in and a lot of excitement that started generating. Uh, Brilliant Stars, because of this, started out extremely strong. It kind of went out of print, out of style right away there was very small reprints right away at the beginning but then nothing for a very very long time and then in November of 2022 so about eight months after the set released Pokemon dropped a massive reprint of Elite Trainer Boxes which really really brought Elite Trainer Boxes way down in price and during this entire time Pokemon had booster boxes a sale uh, bo booster boxes on sale on their website for MSRP pricing for that $143 pricing uh, so people were able to go buy them on Pokemon Center's website despite the fact that that they were being, I mean, scalped or priced higher on TCG Player, we should say, because inventory was so low outside of Pokemon Center's warehouse. Uh, and then in May, Pokemon released a reprint of Booster Boxes. And now we are in a position where not only has Booster Box prices crashed, but a lot of singles and brilliant stars have hit a point where it is extremely cheap. And we're going to look at it today. So you can let me know in the comment section down below what you think of brilliant stars. Uh, if you like this set, if you really like this set for long term, if there's a lot of singles that you still need to get, really just what you think. Because in my opinion, uh, this kind of set the bar, raised the level a lot for Pokemon sets moving forward. We wouldn't have a lot of these illustration rares. Uh, I don't think if brilliant stars wouldn't have been as successful as it was. But because those story art cards were so popular and kind of increasing the pull rates, things really haven't gone back to how they were before where you felt like you were getting terrible pull rates in Fusion Strike and Evolving Skies and Chilling Rain and things like that because Brilliant Stars really made it seem like, hey, you're pulling 10, 12, 14 hits out of a booster box because you're getting these trainer gallery cards. So I'm going to stop rambling so you can actually uh, look at what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to flip you around. Here's the booster box pricing 
4 billion stars. We're looking at a year worth of data here off of TCG Player. And you can see in December of 2022, uh, this booster box really hitting a one-year high at 184.18. Now, remember, like I said, these were available on Pokemon Center's website for the longest time. So this set's been out for almost a year and a half, about a year and four months now. And pretty much during its entirety of release, Pokemon Center has had this available for that $145 mark, that MSRP price point. So people going over to TCG Player, maybe they just didn't have the knowledge. Maybe they didn't have the awareness. Whatever the case may be, they didn't buy it at Pokemon Center's website, which is why uh, the, the market price just continued to rise and rise and rise. And then eventually, once we saw January 2023 kind of turn around a little bit, kind of hit a wall, right? In February of 2023, it was right around that $180 mark. And then Pokemon announced, hey, we're going to reprint this booster box. It's not going to be a massive reprint, but we are going to reprint this. Uh, we're going to have this more available. We're going to circulate this into LGSs, into brick and mortar stores. Uh, and maybe it was just leftover stock that Pokemon Center had. They weren't moving as fast, whatever the case may be more brick and, or more brilliant stars booster boxes hit the market bringing the price way down you can see it's close to a one year low right now where it's sitting at 145.39 so basically back to that msrp in fact it did go below msrp at one point and very close to its one year low of 136.83 if we look at the elite trainer boxes you can see exactly when this got reprinted in november of 2022 because that's when it crashed to a one year low of 32.82 kind of leveled out there for a couple of months before starting to climb back up a little bit but then the booster box reprint also kind of impacting the elite trainer box price a little bit as you can see in april of 2023 it dropped back down from closer to that msrp point of 40 dollars back down below 35 dollars and now it's uh, it's trickled up a little bit sitting at 35.96 but still closer to its one year low than its one year high you can see in june of 2022 the reason why pokemon reprinted it uh, as it was starting to climb and climb in price above that msrp price point of 44 dollars and one cent as a one year high if you look at booster packs all over the place. Booster packs are always a very interesting thing. They don't trick, they don't, uh, there's not a whole lot of dynamic as far as price shift goes when you look at the um, uh, vast amount of price changes. So a $3 booster pack or a $4 booster pack, you might be like, hey, Fanny, that's only a dollar difference. But that 25% difference right there is extremely significant, especially if you're somebody who is collecting a lot of sealed booster packs. As you can see in July of 2022, this was selling for right around $3 a piece, started going up and up and up. And then in December of 2022, when more of those ETBs became available, that's when it was at its one year high. It hit $4.19, which is just above MSRP pricing. Also, right around the time that we saw a lot of those alternate arts explode, including the alternate art Charizard, which passed that $200 mark right around that same time. So a lot more people kind of looking at opening Brilliant Stars. You're not gonna see Brilliant Stars as much in a a whole lot of collection boxes anymore, but there was a, a ton of collection boxes that released during that time frame uh, that had brilliant stars in it. And you can see it dropped down in February of 2023 before going back up a little bit. And then in May of 2023, once we saw that booster box reprinted, it dropped all the way back down to a one-year low of $3 per booster pack. Now it's gone up a little bit, sitting at $3.36, but booster packs are definitely a good gauge of how a product is doing in the market. Here's that Charizard V that we were talking about before, the battle scene with the Venusaur, very cool looking card uh, you can see july october or july august september october kind of climbing and climbing in price where at the beginning of december it did hit that one year high of 20905 but look at what it's done since then this product has crashed and burned like crazy and it is sitting at a one year low currently of 137.73 so when you look at some of these alternate arts like lugia like garatina that continue to rise and rise above that 200 mark and you look at some of the secret rare variants like the umbreon v max and the espion v max the Gengar VMAX, which continued to climb, uh, the Charizard V really also went up in price a lot during that same time frame. but now it's crashed and it hasn't recovered at all and continuing to fall downwards, sitting at 137.73. That's a one-year low, all-time low for this uh, Charizard V alternate art. If we look at the Charizard V-Star, kind of also doing the exact same thing. You can see it's one-year high. In July of 2022, it was above $100, sitting at 106.89. I honestly didn't think we were going to see this card drop below $90, but this card continues to just crumble. Uh, and this just shows you the popularity of Rainbow Rares. Not nearly as popular as what they were during the Sudden Moon Block. Not the chase card anymore. And the Charizard V-Star uh, suffering extremely because of that. You can see it leveled off a little bit. In December, it looked like maybe it was gaining a little bit back. Got back to that $90 price point. And then in May, fell down a little bit more. And now it's sitting really close to that one-year low. It hit $67.10 at the end of May. And now it's sitting at $68.99 currently. If we look at the alternate art, 
Arceus V. This one did do okay as far as consistency goes because it was so playable in the competitive format and should continue to be playable. However, Arceus has been printed so many different times in different variants, different promos, different boxes, things like that. And because of that, the alternate art form definitely suffering. You can see basically from July all the way up until February of 2023, extremely consistent right around that $40 mark. It did hit a one-year high in September of 2022 where it hit $48.12 leveled off a little bit and then in february of 2023 like a lot of these other cards that we've seen modern cards have really hit a wall and this one fell uh, a considerable amount it dropped down to 30 dollars 46 so it's dropped about 25 percent over the past couple months so it hit that one year low at the beginning of june now it's getting a little bit back but still sitting at 31 dollars 10 marnie's pride i don't really know what's going on with marnie's pride looks like it's getting bought out uh not a whole lot of talk about marnie's pride right now but when i was looking at the graphing of this one this one very consistent for an extreme extremely long time. You can see that one year low of $10.06 that was hit in February of 2023, kind of going between $12 and $15 pretty much for the entirety of the past year. And now all of a sudden, boom, it shot up, it shot up over 100%. It's sitting at $23.56 over the last couple weeks. And if you go on TCG Player, there's 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 quant there's they're selling at that price. They're selling at $23, $24, $25, and there's just nothing listed, nothing available below $15 anymore. Looks like it's going through a little bit of a buyout right now, but sitting at 2356. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Marnie's Pride over the next several weeks. Ultra Ball doing extremely well. Obviously a staple in competitive formats. Uh, the gold Ultra Ball is always going to do well because it's something that a lot of competitive players like to use in their deck if they're blinging out their deck fully. They have this one. They have another one that was printed in the Sun and Moon base set, I believe is when the original gold Ultra Ball came out. Uh, but you can see going downwards a little bit from July until December of 2022, that's when it hit its one year low of $15.29. Then rebounded extremely nicely uh, and it's actually one of the brilliant stars cards, one of the few brilliant stars cards that have been going up in price. You can see very strong gains over the past six months or so where it's gained uh, about 40%, maybe even a little bit more than that, sitting at $25.11 since its one-year high a few weeks ago. It's come down to $23.68, currently still way above its one-year low. Here's the full art Charizard V, also struggling, just like what we saw from the other Charizards. You can see in September of 2022, it was at that one-year high where it hit $37.84. It's lost $15, so almost 50% it's lost in the past year. Uh, you can see just a bunch of uh, a bunch of valleys all over the place. Not really any room of growth at all for a, a substantial period of time. Currently sitting at $22.21. That's a one-year low for that one. The alternate art, Luminine V, still a very cool card, but this fish is not doing extremely well. It started rising a little bit like what we saw from the other alternate arts. You can see from June all the way up until February of 2023. It was on a slow trajectory north where it hit $27.92 as a one-year high. But look at how much it's lost since then. It's lost $12, so almost 50% of its worth it's lost in the past four months, sitting at $15.82 currently. Uh, so that's a one-year low for that Lumini and V. The Arceus V-Star, again, another product where there's just so many of them in, in existence. The gold one, the regular Arceus V-Star, the rainbow rare one, all of them selling for basically around the same price point. And then you also have a bunch of different box promos because of that, despite how competitive this card has been, uh, just not performing extremely well in the market. You can see in July of 2022, it was sitting at $38.31. That was a one-year high for this product, but then it just kind of crashed. Arceus kind of fell out of favor a little bit, wasn't used as much in the competitive play, and because there were so many that were getting printed with the box collections, with the premium collections, with the figure collections, uh, just couldn't keep up. And because of that, it kind of crashed into February of 2023, uh, where it dropped below that $15 mark and it's never recovered since then, sitting at $14. 61 currently, so that's a one-year low for that Arceus V-Star. The Galarian Birds also not performing anywhere near what you would expect them to perform. The gold cards just not doing well. People don't have as much interest in these gold cards as what they do for like the Snorlax from Chilling Rain. Uh, the gold cards didn't do as well in the Sword and Shield era block as what they did in Sun and Moon. You can see this card selling for $22.23 in June of 2022. That was a one-year high. And then in November, closed in on that one-year low before starting to jump back up a little bit, hit close to that $19 mark and then drop back down hit a one-year low in may of 2023 where it hit $13.68 cents it's rebounded a little bit but still sitting at 1441 that's the most expensive of all the galarian bird gold cards uh just not performing extremely well umbreon vmax really consistent for a long time and then in may of 2023 hit a wall like what we saw from some of these other modern cards so in july of 2022 it was right around that one year high of 27 dollars and 22 cents it's seen about 30 percent of a loss since then uh, but for the most part that loss has happened over the the 
past few months because even in February of 2023, it was still right around that $26 mark. And then in May, that's where it hit that wall. It dropped down to $20.32. It's gained a little bit back, sitting at $23.07 currently, still a little bit closer to its one-year low than its one-year high. The other popular trainer gallery card, Sylveon VMAX. This one, beautiful card, very consistent as well. Not a whole lot of price movement for the past or for seven, eight months there uh, from July of 2022 all the way up until February of 2023. Very consistent. You can see it hit a one-year high in February of 2023 of $21.30. But then, like what we saw from some of these other ones, we saw that reprint, and then boom, this card hit a one-year low of $15.15 in May. It's rebounded a little bit, but still sitting at $16.15. The last one that we're going to look at is this Mimikyu VMAX, because this one got hit really hard from the reprint. Very consistent, right around $16 from July all the way up to February, and then it's lost about uh, a third of its price point, so about 40% uh, in the past just couple months since the reprint actually happened. You can see in May it fell down to $12 and then fell down even more than that in June. It hit $10.94. It's a one-year low. Rebounded a little bit, but still sitting at $11.08 currently. That's the last one. You can let me know what you think in the comment section down below uh, of Brilliant Stars. Still a beautiful set. Maybe now the time to buy some of these singles now that they're kind of leveling off, uh, falling down in price now that more and more product has become available. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward because Brilliant Star is not really going to be a set that's going to be included in a lot of collection boxes anymore, especially the future ones, because you're going to be focusing more on Pelde Evolved, more on uh, Scarlet and Violet Base, and then the back half or the last uh, set or two of uh, Sword and Shield, where we've got Silver Tempest and maybe Lost Origin that might sneak in there still, but Brilliant Star is probably on its way out when it comes to booster packs. That was probably the last reprint that we'll see now that booster box pricing has really kind of leveled off. Wouldn't surprise me if they did something similar with some of the other sets, uh, but definitely interesting to look at. Clearly, Pokemon has proven time and time again that they're going to do what they can to make sure product is available as long as you're patient. It's very important to remember that as we move forward into Pokemon uh, 151, Scarlet and Violet 151, which we're going to talk about tomorrow, so make sure to come back for that guys thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video if you enjoy the content leave a like and a comment i love reading your comments i really appreciate it even if it's just hey what's up fanny uh that means a lot to me so uh thank you so much for that hit that subscribe button if you haven't already share the channel you guys are awesome i'm done rambling until next time guys peace